Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mortgage Insiders Edition. And this time we have a special guest from our uh, real estate industry. Uh, Neil Thompson is a realtor with Maxwell Polaris in Edmonton and surrounding areas. And he is a longtime partner for us in the mortgage industry. We always appreciate his valuable insights and valuable support for always towards uh, mortgages, mortgage people like me in, in the industry. So recently, Neil was attending a realtor uh, association of Alberta, RAE, uh, their annual forecast that that just happened recently, and he was sharing those details with us. So we thought, why not put this, those valuable um, thoughts and uh, feedback that he learned into a video and present it to our listeners and uh, viewers across Canada. So here we are. So Neil, first of all, welcome. And uh, with Thank me you. always is my uh, partner in crime, Kim Nguyen uh, from Calgary. So Kim, um, do you have any initial questions for Neil regarding his background, or should we just jump into uh, the forecasting model? I think, like, you know what? I think that's a hot topic on everyone's mind, right? Like, what the heck is actually going on in this crazy market? Like, I mean, we're only, what, month two? And it's just, you know, the real estate market is just, it's crazy, right? Especially here in Alberta. So I think we're dying yeah. to know what the, outca the outcome is, the forecast is, Neil. So tell us, you know, give us some high-level notes about uh, what's to come, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so in, in Edmonton, uh, we're getting a ton of snow right now. So you'd think that the, the buyers might be hiding and, uh, you know, hibernating, but they're they're very much not. The buyers are coming out in droves and we're, we're experiencing a really uh, sort of pickup in activity for February. It's unseasonably busy. Um, I would say the market's going to be very dynamic this year. And uh, okay. it looks like, uh, a lot of the people at the forum are forecasting a bullish market for Alberta, and there's a number of reasons for that. Um, you guys probably know from the number of new buyers that you're seeing, we're getting a lot of in-migration in Alberta. There's an Alberta affordability advantage that um, is surprisingly affordable for uh, the Ontario and BC markets. We have a really strong economy, uh, and then people are coming from abroad also to Canada, because we have a you know relatively stable government, stable economy, and uh, Alberta is leading the leading the charge for economic growth for Canada. So a lot of people in other areas who are struggling to afford a, a home or some space for the, their family are saying, hey, why don't we move out west and you know let's see what's going on. And 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 people primarily will go to Calgary first, which you see, Kim, uh, and then mm -hmm. the overflow parking comes to Edmonton, or some people may go right to Edmonton. But uh, they do have the mountains. Uh, they do have a lot of white collar jobs. They do not have the Edmonton Oilers, which is awesome because there can only be one Connor McDavid. Uh, so, so yeah, guys, it's it's going to be a really exciting year. And I'm sure your your phones are are ringing like crazy, like mine is. Uh, so it's 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 going to be exciting. Strap strap in and buckle up for a for a rocket ship ride in the in the 2024 market. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting because it's like pre. You and I have felt that, right? Because generally speaking, like in real estate, and this is I would I would say across all markets, usually from the holidays, so Christmas time leading into January, there's usually a lull in business, right? Because again, people are spending time with their families. It's cold. Nobody wants to move. But like I feel like this year in particular, it was a little bit of a change. Like I felt, especially here in Calgary a change in dynamic even though rates haven't dropped right like don't get me wrong rates have come down yeah. a little bit like week by week but it wasn't anything massive or significant but again like the phones were ringing people were walking around they're moving around like they're looking they're aggressively looking which is it's um yeah it's crazy right it should be cyclical but i know you didn't see that either i don't think i don't think since covid anybody's been able to predict the market nobody like there is a really common real estate term that nobody has a crystal ball where we can look into it and say this is what's going to happen this year we can have an idea and a sense of what's happening in the market by the amount of activity that we're getting from our buyers and sellers and you guys you know obviously the number of people that are looking to get qualified or refinance um so right now that activity is happening a lot earlier and the the market historically would be seasonal 
Uh, first peak April to June, second peak September to November. Um, but right now in February, we're seeing like spring market conditions where there's a lot of interest, lots of sign calls on listings. You know, I, I, I put up a listing on Tuesday. We've had almost 40 showings in three days. We have wow. eight offers in hand and there, there are buyers coming out of the woodwork. So a lot of like a lot of pent up demand and people that are on the sidelines going, well, let's see where the interest rates go. Well, interest rates yeah. have somewhat stabilized. The feds are saying, you know, um, we may be re evaluating interest rates over the course of the year. From what I gleaned from the forecast, it feels like they're probably not going to touch interest rates in Q1. They may be mm -hmm. looking to stall uh, a bit of a hot market because they don't want, they don't want prices to go up. If, if, there's an inverse relationship between interest rate increases and prices. Usually prices drop. So the, you know, the, I don't know, how many hikes did we have? 12 or was it 14 last year? We um, lost the count, Neil. Okay, yeah. <laughs> too many, in my opinion, too many. Anyways, tip, typically interest rate rises, we'd see prices dropping, but prices have held steady. And I think in Calgary, you've seen tremendous growth. Um, and that's because of in-migration. So we're getting a ton of new buyers into our province from other provinces from other countries um a lot to do with the strong economic prospects of alberta we've got we've got tons of resources we've got affordable housing uh, we've got a relatively good quality of life and high um, income so alberta's a really good place and edmonton uh, led the country in affordability for uh, major cities, so uh, we're, yeah. we're looking for we're looking at a really strong market this year for sellers and for buyers. You know, obviously, get with your mortgage broker immediately. Make sure that when you're going to go to the table to make an offer, you have all of your ducks in a row. You've submitted all your paperwork. You've done all your due diligence so that you can have the best shot at getting a property because in the three to five hundred thousand dollar price range excuse me yeah. uh hey bud I, yeah sorry <laughs> my little guy's just uh, gonna get some headphones here but yeah um in the three to five hundred thousand dollar price range cole say hi 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 okay see you buddy um in the three to five hundred thousand dollar price range it's gonna be kind of a fist fight for buyers so you know you, you got to come ready to bring the heat. You got to have all of your ducks in a row and, and try to pre present an offer to the sellers that gives you the b best price in terms, sometimes over multiple offers. And in, in my listing situation, eight other competitors and probably more coming in uh, before we present tonight. So Neil, what other advice do you, uh, you talked about pre-approvals, uh, you talk about interest rates. What other advice are you giving to your clients who are basically, especially in the move up market and they're thinking to sell their property and use the down payment towards the next property, especially in the seller's market, what other advice you have for them? So for sellers, I would say that I would, it depends. Like it depends on what your scenario is like. If you can sell and buy at the same time, or if you can buy before selling, then you know mm -hmm. obviously have your down payment ready. Um, check with your lender on bridge financing. So you want to make sure that you can carry both mortgages at the same time. Um, if mm -hmm. you can't, if you don't have the luxury of being able to do both at once, uh, or or buy before selling, then make sure that you're trying to. To, to do each side of the transaction with strength. So um, sell strong, buy strong. And if I were looking to uh, house up in this market, I'd probably want to mm -hmm. get on sooner than later. I'd want to try to negotiate a long possession date. And then I'd want to give myself as much of a window as I could to, to buy into the buy back into the market. And it depends on the price point as well. So, you know, maybe maybe above 800,000, it'd be more rare space, fewer buyers, but still competition, like in all the price segments, if you're three to 500,000, you know, bring the heat, get your, get your house sold, have your conditions removed, and then be prepared to offer on a property with strength and, and as much strength as you can have. And like, talk with your lender, make sure that you've vetted out all the potential options uh, are family willing to gift you some down payment? Like, do you have any other savings? Are you using your RSPs? Or is is there any way that you can present a strong offer? And and sometimes that's with a strong down payment. If it's a multiple offer, like 
the the seller sellers always want to get more buyers always want to pay less our interests are opposite but in a market where the 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 seller is favored there's more buyers than there are properties for sale you it's it's like a reverse negotiation where you're like here's my best offer first i'm showing you all my money i want to shorten my condition period i want to i want to provide the best price and terms because i want you to accept my offer over the seven other offers that are out there and and sometimes you know some of our out of province buyers are coming with all cash and not even viewing the property so it's like it's very it's very interesting it's very something that i don't have the intestinal fortitude to do is like buy a property site unseen but there are buyers out there that are like i'm selling my condo in toronto and it's 600 yeah. square feet and it's six hundred thousand dollars and I'm going to come home, come to Edmonton, and I'm going to buy a two or three thousand square foot property, and and I don't even care if it's not great. It's going to be better than this condo, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to give me space for my family, which which we really want, which people really want. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's so crazy to see that, right? And I think like, so one thing I want to ask you then, Neil, is that, you know, I guess like our version of like the million dollar question to you probably, and I'm sure you hear this is, okay, as a client, like as a potential buyer, like, sh- does it make sense for me to wait until interest rates come down and then buy? Or do I do it now? Like always the million dollar question. What are your so, thoughts on so that? So date the rate, marry the home, right? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, date the rate, like, hey, we're, we're going to see each other. I don't want to keep you for long because I know you're a little bit expensive, but marry the home, you know, find your right home and, and, and obviously talk to your lender because you're going to, you, you guys can look into the bond yield rate. Like you don't have that forward looking crystal ball either, but you can kind of look at the trends in the market, like the bond yield rate and see where, where you think interest rates may go or where you have an informed, uh, informed perspective on where the interest rates might go. So, I'd say try to find your house uh, sooner than later. And I don't think time is your friend in this market. So the longer you wait, the more the property value will go up. And uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at my notes. There were a couple there were a couple big numbers that came out. So the Alberta market, I may be misquoting this, but the Alberta market is supposed to go up by I think it's like 6.2% in 2023. So this is provincially, right? Um, and then eight point 8.2 to 8.8% in 2025. I hope I said that correctly. 2024, six point right. something yeah. growth. 2025, 8% growth. And that's all yeah. of Alberta. And, and Kim, you had a really great point when we're looking to the news and the media and, and sources on um, insight into the market, let's separate you know, na- national data from provincial data from regional data, like Edmonton and Calgary, same province, yep. two totally different markets. Yeah, totally so different. different. Yeah. And, and that's and, why I, and I expect that as well too, right? So it's like, if you want to be a little bit of a psychic, it's like, see what's happening to Calgary, it's going to trickle down right after. <laughs> so Probably six to eight weeks down, it will happen in, in Edmonton, yeah, so. So Edmonton is lagged behind Calgary and, and some one of the economists said that Edmonton doesn't have the land problem that Calgary has. So Calgary kind of has a, a reserve on the north side and then the mountains on the west. Um, so they, there may not be as much arable land in Calgary. So there there may be less inventory available. Edmonton could grow all directions, but I don't think builders are uh, have kept up to the demand. And I've heard it said that there's like chronic housing shortage all across North America. This isn't an Edmonton or Calgary problem. This is like a Canada-wide problem problem and and a north america wide problem so you know more more people are coming here than than we have built capacity was there anything unique that you learned on that date in during the forecast which you did not expect neil (laughs) was there something unique that was shared that many people are ignoring i'm not sure people are ignoring this but economists are usually like you know they're, they're very they're very kind of vague and they give you like all these nebulous <laughs> predictions where you're like, well, two to 4% chance of growth. And, you know, I have an 80% chance of that being right. So you're like, well, what do you mean? And this year, most all of the speakers were very bullish on the market. And so, yeah. you know, they're they're reading the, the clues uh, of in-migration, um, strong economy. And they're saying like, you know, there, there may be strong growth in Alberta 
And one of our weaknesses in our forecast is we may not be able to predict how much that is. So, you know, Canada is growing very quickly at, at the moment. And uh, Alberta seems to be benefiting from that in a great way, too. So yeah. typically yeah. they're typically they're like very vague. This year they were like we started off with the developer thanking all the agents, which never happens because some of the builders and developers like in not a strong market, they, they don't really need our help. You know, they may, they may not want a cooperation from agents. And the first person to speak was a developer and they're saying, hey, we love you guys. We want to work with you, like bring us your business. So I was like, okay, that, that's a different start. And then the rest of the forecast was like, basically Alberta appears to be in a really good position. We're really strong. So, you know, get your homework done, get, get everything done in advance and be prepared. And if you wait in the market, let's say the market goes up by 5% and that's a conservative estimate on $400,000 home, you're going to lose out on 20 grand appreciation. If it goes up by 10%, that's 40 grand appreciation. So, you know, to go back to your interest rate scenario, Kim, and you guys could do a rate differential calculation, but 40,000 versus the incremental interest cost and paying one or 2% more on your interest, you know, date the rate, marry the house. That's what I'm saying. Well said, well said. Honestly, Neil, right? Because again, I find like it is hard to decipher and that's why we like doing this to make it a little bit more localized, right? Just to the specific region, to the specific specific province because we find that, again, we have listeners Canada-wide, but when you look at the Canada headlines, it's all doom and gloom. They're like, I don't know, there's going to be a bubble, this, this, and that. And it's funny because us in Alberta, we're like, what bubble, <laughs> right? And I'm yeah. like, These people... <laughs> I was like, there's offers upon offers. It's just the wild west out here, really. So it's good to kind of dissect that. But yeah, no, thank you, Neil, for sharing. Like that's been very, it's ma- it's amazing, right? Just to kind of hear that. Because again, Albert, this is what Alberta needs. We've been in a slump for quite some time. And it's nice to kind of see that uh, this is the upswing. So it's a nice yeah. feeling. Let's take it while we got it. The yeah. only struggle that I see personally on the buyer side are the first time home buyers who are basically in the service industry like very basic jobs no skill jobs they are a little bit hard to find right now but if if clients are in a skilled profession let's say example a mechanic uh, they are like easily finding jobs when they are doing interprovincial migration uh, the very basic jobs like uh, low paying jobs like startup jobs that are the stuff uh, uh, right now tough ones to find but i think it will gradually improve um employers will change what they are looking for and um, it will take time but we are definitely in a better market than all across Canada, right? Especially, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think like for anyone listening who's thinking about making the transition to Alberta or looking to buy, like again, I think the message also boils down to work with a trusted professional that knows the market, right? Again, like if you're not looking at this day in, day out, don't make assumptions. Work with the pros, work with uh, those who you trust to kind of give you the actual true data. And and again, in a competitive market, like you need a strong power team, right? You, you can't just have anybody help you out like it's uh you gotta be a little creative <laughs> you, you have to understand the market and 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 having really knowledgeable people on your team makes a difference it makes a big difference especially insight into how to write an offer insight into how to structure your income um you know like there's a lot of things that you guys can do and this is one of the reasons why i've stayed very close to pre is because you know how, how do how do i get my client to qualify for this Pre, we did a deal just before Christmas with a new build, and you yeah. were able to to shop his rate between a bunch of different lenders, and he was unable to get qualified, and he was able to work with you guys, and you got him a home, yeah. and they have a new baby, and that makes a big difference in their world. So thank yeah. you, Pre, thank you for, yeah, no for all yeah all that you do, and nobody else was able to do that. I knew if anybody was able to do that, it was you, and you did it. So thank you. Well, thank you again. Yeah. On yeah. top of that, we also got them like into different product combination, like first time home buyer incentive program, plus the purchase plus improvement, all together in one single deal. So <laughs> it was uh, basically everything in one bucket. So yeah. you, you said the high jump and the long jump at the same time, right? Dude. Yeah, that was a great that was a great analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Neil. I really appreciate Kim and I both appreciate your presence today and sharing mm-hmm. your uh, feedback with our valued listeners and viewers across Canada. Uh, if time permits, we will definitely invite you in future ones and maybe mm-hmm. we will do a specific topic where you can help 
our clients and listeners with anything related to real estate. Happy to help. Thanks so much for having me on, you guys. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Neil. Thank you.